Another few weeks have gone by, so it is indeed time to turn our attention to yet another WWE pay-per-view, this time known as Extreme Rules. Well, let's face it, given how unpredictable WWE has been recently, who knows what's going to happen on this damn show? Whether it's a good or bad thing, only you can decide in your brain. But I'm Simon Miller, and damn it, let's make some predictions for Extreme Rules 2018. We will begin with the Raw Tag Team Champions, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt taking on the B Team. And this is what I would have said before I saw Raw this week. I think it's time to take the titles off those guys and give them to the B Team. But like I say, then I watched on Monday night and I was like, that ain't going to happen. Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt are going to retain. Let me just do some time traveling quickly to let you know where I would have been coming from. Because while I like the deleter of worlds, I don't think they're as crazy as they should be. I mean, look at both characters. We really could dial this up a notch. But you can't just do that. You've got to have some kind of narrative or some kind of story or a catalyst. And a catalyst in this scenario could be, oh no, we lost the Raw Tag Team titles. What do we do to get them back? Well, let's just go super nuts and act like really weird people. Head in that direction. Also, the B team right now actually have some momentum, so we should give them the championships here and run with it. I mean, if you want them to lose it 24 hours again later on Raw, you can. I mean, that would suck, but at least it would justify everything they've been doing over the last few weeks. And that benefits everybody and makes a very interesting twist on the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. I just love Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas, really. I think they've been underused for a while, and finally they are being utilised. So I don't want to just like hit a dead end and that be that. However, if you have been watching Raw the last few weeks, you'll know every time this bunch is engaged in single matches, Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas have won. And usually within the world of WWE, that means when it comes to the big match, which is this, they will lose. So basically, after all that nonsense, yes, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt to retain their championships that's my prediction. We'll do Carmella versus Oscar next. I'm not going to lie. I worry just a little teeny bit about this. I didn't necessarily think everything we did between Oscar and James Ellsworth helped everything. It's entertaining. Don't get me wrong. But if we get to this point and Oscar loses again, after everything happened at WrestleMania, where does she go from there? Or, just or, have we pulled the rug out from underneath her and we didn't actually have a plan to make sure that didn't happen? That is the issue, though. I completely believe that Carmella is going to retain her title. That's one of the reasons why Oscar beat James Ellsworth on SmackDown. I also believe that WWE management quite liked Carmella, and that's fine. She is very good, but that just meant that Oscar was treading water here. That doesn't assist anyone. And again, where does she go? What is next? Back of the line, I would imagine. How on earth can you go from undefeated streak to back of the line in about three months. That, my friends, man. Let's flip it for a second, though, because it is good for Carmella, and she's a very good heel. If she can extend her championship reign here, she's only going to get stronger and stronger as a character. And you know how she's going to win. Somehow James Ellsworth is going to get out of that damn shark cage that he's in. I don't know what to do. We attack Oscar or whatever. I don't know. But she'll win. And then she can be all like, oh, I've still got my heat. Well, she won't say that. But she will still have her heat. And we can all boo her because she's got heat. From there, we'll just have to see what happens on SmackDown with the women's division in the upcoming weeks and the upcoming months. I got the fear, though. I got the fear. Carmella wins. Then, of course, we're going to get the 30-minute Iron Man match between Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins. You just know that's going to kick ass, even though, yeah, you can argue, what is the point of having a 30-minute Iron Man match where on Raw a couple of weeks ago, they went over 30 minutes. I can't explain that. I don't write the shows anymore. I gave it up in 2008, but now I can only report them to you. It's quite a hard one to call as well. My gut is telling me that Seth Rollins is going to win because WWE still doesn't treat the IC title as they should. It's not like the beacon of importance I'd like it to be. And because of that, they don't mind hot potatoing around. Also, giving it back to Rollins is no bad thing. In fact, it's a very good thing. He did awesome with it first time around. But then, of course, there is Drew McIntyre, a man that clearly Vince McMahon is quite high on, as he should be, because let's face it, Drew should be in the main event scene sooner rather than later. Also, that's got a time to proceeding somehow because we did the whole thing on Raw, where I was like, well, if you don't win your match tonight, you'll be banned from ringside. He did win, therefore he's at ringside, therefore we need some kind of conclusion with that story. Because if he doesn't, that doesn't make him look good, it makes him look the opposite. Not good. So do you know what the workaround is? We finally pull the trigger to break up Dolph Ziggler 
and Drew McIntyre. Now, it is too soon, it is too early, but when is WWE ever worried about that? Somehow, McIntyre can try and interfere, screw it up, that upsets Dolph Ziggler, he's not looking, Seth Rollins can do whatever he does to win, one, two, three, gets his championship back, and then Dolph and Drew can go off and feud, Seth can go and do whatever he wants, and there you go, you got loads of little stories from one match. Oh, I'd be all right with that, and again, it starts Drew's push into the big time, and my word, he needs to be in the big time. But that jibber-jabber aside, Seth Rollins, new Intercontinental Champion at Extreme Rules. And let's look at Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss, because what a nut situation that is. Not only is Nia Jax a face from nowhere, and we've been trying to figure out for the last few weeks on ups and downs, and we still don't know, but also apparently in real life, these two have proper heat with each other. And not wrestling heat, reality heat. I don't know what's going on there. Let's face it though, Bliss ain't gonna lose her belt here, and Ronda Rousey, who is gonna be sat front row at Extreme Rules, will somehow get involved. If she didn't, the whole thing would be pointless, and because she does do that, you can then suspend her off TV for another month or whatever you wanna do, because you know at the moment she's doing other things, so we need to keep her off the product. It is, of course, an Extreme Rules match though, so Ronda can get involved without causing a DQ, but I don't know, she gets in there. She has a big fight with Bliss, maybe Nia Jax gets in her face and is like, oh, you're trying to cost me my opportunity, Ronda. Ronda's like, no, I'm not. What are you talking about? Nia Jax then attacks Ronda. And of course, throughout all of this, Bliss is like, oh, look at the massive gaping hole I can now take advantage of. And then she smashes Jax with a chair, rolls her up. And there's a thousand things you can do. The point is, that will all happen. Then we can segue into a three-way between them all, not at Extreme Rules, but down the line. And that continues to protect Ronda Rousey because she still needs protecting as she finds her feet in the ring. There's my picture. There's my women's title picture I've just painted for you. That's what my heart tells me anyway. And always follow your heart. It tells you things, especially when you're in trouble. If it's beating too fast, ring the hospital. Everybody fancy doing the WWE title match too? Good, because that's what we're going to do. And it ain't Brock Lesnar. You know that. I know that. It ain't the beast, but it is AJ Styles versus my man Rusev. And as much as I would like my man Rusev to win, it breaks me to say that he's this isn't really the end of the world, but it does make me a little bit sad because I don't believe, at least not anytime soon, Rusev is going to get another opportunity at the WWE Championship, and he really should. He's awesome. But if Nakamura isn't going to beat Styles for the WWE Championship, I highly doubt the Bulgarian brute is, especially because WWE didn't even capitalize properly when Rusev Day blew up. They didn't even turn him face. So I can't see them doing it now, and it's more of a holding pattern for Styles before he segues off into probably a feud with Samoa Joe. And I ain't got no problem with that. It'll be incredible, but it still stings to know that's how Rusev could potentially get treated. Hopefully he still has an awesome showing and comes out the other side looking even better than he did going in. But yeah, AJ Styles keeps his WWE Championship and can you believe it? He's now been holding on to that thing since November 2017. And that blows my brain. Then we're getting Team Hell No getting back together to take on the Bludgeon Brothers for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. And I can completely see WWE giving them the belts because everybody loves them and they're so damn good. Even though it'd probably be for the short term because you've got to imagine anything with Daniel Bryan going into SummerSlam is going to be focused around the Miz. And if they are going to clash there, you've got to do something soon. And what better way to do that than the Miz costing Daniel Bryan his shot at the Tag Team Gold by interfering in this swally. And I get it, we don't want to see Daniel Bryan lose, but he doesn't have to. Kane can take the loss here, because he's Kane. Doesn't matter what he does, what he comes out dressed as, what he says, he's going to be Kane forever, because he's got longevity. And I think that is the way to go. Keep the belts on the Bludgers Brothers, continue to push them, and use this to build to a match between The Miz and Daniel Bryan that we all want to see. And if you don't want to do that, and you want to give the tag team titles to Team Hell No, I'm all right with that. I love that pair. But I am going to say The Miz gets involved, the Bludgeons keep their belts, that's it. Voila. Also, from nowhere, we've been given a table scrap between The New Day and Sanity. And given that WWE doesn't allow Sanity to win any wrestling matches, you've got to imagine The New Day are going to win. Now they won't, and I'll look stupid after one member of The New Day gets held through some wood. But let's face it, in a tables match, you can win by complete fluke. I remember the time Big Show lost the tables match because he accidentally stood on a table. I think how stupid that is. But I'll go with The New Day, though, because why not? That's what I think about this feud. That. A shrug of the shoulders. We also have Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin. I don't want to be harsh or mean, but it just seems like such a dud. And that's not on those two guys, but the material they've given has kind of fallen flat. I mean, what? Finn Balor doesn't like Baron Corbin because he thinks he looks like a waiter, and Baron Corbin doesn't like Finn Balor because he's small. 
quite hard to buy into. The match itself, though, should be very good. Finn Balor is absolutely amazing, and I think Baron Corbin gets quite a hard rap. The potential is still there. We just need other people to drag that out of him, and who better to do that than the demon? Because, yeah, the demon is great. And who knows? Maybe they will light it up and they'll get people invested, especially if Baron Corbin wins. Which I think he will. I don't think this is a one and done and I think the feud is going to continue and if that is the case you allow the heel to get the first pinfall which of course here is Baron Corbin. That sucks for Finn. This is more about what's going to happen down the line. The real shame with all of this is that it isn't invested around Corbin's hair. Imagine how much we'd enjoy this if we knew all. Oh, if Finn Balor wins Baron Corbin has to shave his head but instead the constable just came out on Raw one day and poof it was gone. This makes me sad guys. It makes me really sad because you always treat hair with respect respect. Otherwise, look what happens. Jeff Hardy and Shinsuke Nakamura also wage war this Sunday in a match for some reason I'm really looking forward to. I don't know why, but I think Shinsuke is great. I think Jeff Hardy's great. It's a matchup I'm not overly used to. I think they're going to tear it up. Also, the US title brings it all together. It's like a lovely cherry on top and everybody likes the damn cherry. Nakamura has to win too. Jeff Hardy can get away with murder these days because everybody loves him, whereas Shinsuke needs a title to justify his heel turn. Now, it should have been the WWE Championship, but that ain't gonna happen, so give him the US belt instead. And that is okay. It's not ideal, but it's okay. Plus, it's the United States title, and if you've missed it, Nakamura is Japanese, and that just writes itself. You can have all the fun in the world with that. And also, if you allow him to win here, the Jeff Hardy-Nakamura feud can also continue through the summer, much like Corbin and Balor. Once more, nothing wrong with that. Kevin Owens versus Braun Strowman is also going to go down in a cage match, and yeah, the build to this has been just a teeny bit campy, but Owens is brilliant. Braun Strowman knows his role. They'll make this work. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. And let's face it, there ain't no way Kevin Owens is winning this match. One, Braun Strowman is Mr. Money in the Bank, and two, he's Vince McMahon's new favourite son. And yeah, one of the options is to escape over the cage, but I just can't see it. I always bet against Braun. I'm always wrong. I ain't betting against Braun again. Then, hilariously, our main event may very well be Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley. I actually think this is going to be decent, but come on, WWE. Stop teasing everybody. If you've got a WWE Championship on the line, put that in the last match on the show. But whatever, the build to this one has actually been pretty good. And the only thing I'm slightly concerned about is how the fans are going to take to it. We all know what people think about Roman Reigns and they boo him all the time. And also before the last few weeks, Bobby Lashley had cooled down just a little bit. Also, at one point, this was meant to be a multi-man number one contendership bout. Really, when you compare the two, that one would have been better. But look at it this way. The two are very good. And over the last few weeks, they've gone out of their way to try and get fans to buy in. And I think, by and large, they've been really successful. I know I care more about this today than I did a few weeks ago. And that's exactly how it should work. WWE can use this to try and give that extra bit of push to Roman Reigns that they seem so desperate to give him. Of course he's going to win here because he has to leave this scenario and go on and fight Brock Lesnar again for the Universal title and we can plant all the seeds here. But to do that, they've got to be allowed to have a damn good match. So fingers crossed, everyone backstage says to both of them, look man, we're taking the training wheels off here. There ain't nothing you can't do. Just go crazy and win everybody over. As a quick aside, WWE, if this is your plan, just for the love of everything, go with it. Put the Universal title back on Roman. Allow him to turn up on Raw as the champion. Or can you imagine that? A champion on Raw and then we can just go from there. And that will be that. Extreme Rules will be in the book and then we can observe the lay of the land and see if WWE starts hotting up, pun intended, as we take those lovely few steps towards SummerSlam. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know your predictions for Extreme Rules 2018. Like, share, and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com and read us some articles. Follow What Culture on Twitter, WhatCultureWWE. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you for watching, and make sure you enjoy Extreme Rules. It may fill up one of those pay-per-views that doesn't need to exist. It doesn't really have that many Extreme Rules on it, but still, put a smile in your heart, and you'll see a smile on your face.